Hey guys, thanks for joining me for the episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Grim Forest. This is a new game by Druid City Games. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly half an hour to an hour to play, and it is a competitive game, so each of the players is working against the other players to achieve the victory conditions. So in the game itself, the Greedy King is trying to level the forest, and he has sees an opportunity to make a lot of gold in this. Unfortunately, the original Three Little Pigs are too old and senile now to help him, so he has put out the call, and the Three Little Pigs' nephews and nieces have come to try to prove that they can be the next royal builder. In order to do this, the first person or pig that can build three houses out of straw, stone, or wood will be the overall winner of the game. So my opinions of this game so far are that it's very good. It's great for an introductory game. It's great as a family game. There's not a ton of depth to this one, but there's also not a, a lot of complexity. So it's very easy to teach, very easy to pick up on, uh, as you guys are going to see in the video. And it's just a lot of fun. It's got a great theme to it, obviously, with the three little pigs. And they pull a lot of theme from all of the different types of fantasy stories that you've grown up with or seen throughout the years. So definitely one I would recommend. The artwork on this is absolutely beautiful. And the production was very good. The minis are very solid. Uh, everything, all the components and all that are very well done in this game. So definitely one I would recommend checking out. Uh, like I said, especially if you're looking for a light strategy game or a good game to introduce to the family to play, this is definitely one that I would recommend looking at. So if you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel as it will help me to continue to grow and bring these great titles to you guys. And if you're interested in, in getting notifications anytime I release new videos, please consider ringing that bell as well so that you get emails every time I release new content. So let's go ahead and head to the table and I'll teach you guys how to play. There are two different decks included in the game that I'd like to go over real quick. The first one is the Fable deck. And by completing different objectives and doing different actions, players will get to draw Fable cards throughout the game. Each of these cards is a little tricky card that will allow players to do different things or bring different enemies into the, the game or whatnot. Each of these cards is going, some of them will have icons at the top corner, which there are three different ones. There are monster icons, which will tell you that you'll be dropping a monster in the, in the location you play this in. There are unique location cards, which will be added to your play area and give you some sort of bonus. And then there are next turn icon cards that will trigger the next turn as opposed to this turn. Then there's also just plain cards that will do different things. Each of these cards is going to have the name here and the fable symbol. Now there are advanced symbols as well. So if you're choosing not to play the advanced game, then you'll go ahead and take out all of those cards with the little feather and the A next to them. Then each card is going to tell you when it is going to activate and then what it is going to do when it activates. Moving over, we have the friend cards, and these cards are going to be persistent effects that will, uh, will help the player give them a bonus at, during the game. And each of these cards, each player can only have one friend card at a time. If a player is required to draw another friend card, then they must choose to either keep that card and discard theirs, or give it to another player, forcing that player to discard their friend card if they have one, as you guys are going to see. And just like the Fable cards, they work similarly. They have the name of the card. And then their symbol, which is the little rose. The advanced symbol is also there, so if you're not playing an advanced game, you'll go ahead and remove all of those. And then each card is going to tell you again when it is going to activate and what it is going to do. And then some of the cards will also have a discard ability, which allows you to discard it to gain that ability. Throughout the game, players are going to be working to gather different resources to build the three different types of houses. And players can make any combination of houses. They don't have to stick with one of each type. They can build multiples of one type. They're going to use the straw to build straw houses, wood to build wood houses, and brick to build brick houses. In each house, we'll start with a foundation, then the walls, and finally the roof to complete the house. For player setup, each player is going to choose a color they want to play as, and they'll gather their player board, the miniature matching that color, and the three gather cards of that, which are straw, wood, and brick. If you're playing a four-player game, you can also gain, gain the gather market card. If you're playing a three- or two-player game, the gather market card will be returned to the box and you will not use it. Finally, each player will also gain a player aid that is going to outline the different phases of each round for them. Board setup is very straightforward. First, we're going to put out the three gather locations, fields, forest, and brick. If you're playing a four-player game, then you'll also include the market. 
From there, then you can also place out the three first bonuses underneath those locations for, for uh, fields, forest, and brick. And then each location is going to get a mega pile. So the fields will have five straw, the woods will have four wood, and the brickyard will have three bricks. From there, if you're playing with the market, then you'll also put one of each resource in there for that one. So we'll have one brick, one wood, and one straw. Then we can go ahead and place out both of the decks, shuffle those up, and remember to take out the advanced cards if you're playing a basic game, or to include them if you're playing an advanced game. And you can also place out the two trays with all the resources in it and the buildings, as well as any of the monsters that you'll be using for this game. Then finally, each player can go ahead and place out their playing board, just like I explained already for player setup. And finally, we're going to choose one player to be the starting player and get the first player token. So we'll go ahead and give it to blue here. Grim Forest is played over an undefined number of rounds, with each round consisting of three phases, which are gather, build, and clean up. And this is going to continue until the, at the end of a build phase, one or more players have completed three houses. At that point, the game will end and the players will determine the winning player. Moving into the game, we're going to go ahead and start with the first phase in each round, which is the gather phase. During the gather phase, each player must select one gather card and may additionally select one fable card if they wish from their hand. Everyone is going to set their chosen cards face down on the table. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is the first round of the game, so nobody has any fable cards yet, but each player must select one gather card and play it face down on the table. Normally the player gets to choose the card, but I'm going to go ahead and do this randomly just so that we can see where the different guys go at random. Keep it a little interesting. Now once all the players have played any cards that they wish to face down, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is that we're going to reveal all played Fable cards and resolve the Fable cards that activate when revealed. And we're going to do this in a clockwise manner, starting with the player that has the first player token and working our way around. Also, if any Fable cards have the eye icon indicating that it's a monster, when revealed, the player takes the, mo the miniature and places it on, the, on, the, on any one location of their choice. And then there is a max of one monster per location. Finally, we're going to reveal all gather cards. Each player places their pig in the location shown on the card, and then we're going to resolve any Fable effects that activate before collecting resources. So each of our players is going to flip our cards over. So our blue player went to the markets. Green went for straw. Brown went for wood. And finally, purple went for straw. If a pig is alone at a location, that player collects all the resources in that area. If more than one pig is in a location, the resources are divided equally among all the players rounding down. Any resources left over remain in that location for the next gather phase. So our blue player has gathered all three of these and we'll just place it in their gather area since they are alone. Same with the orange player, he is alone as well so he gets to gain all of those. But our two other players went for straw so each of them is going to gain two straw and one will be left in the fields as we cannot divide that up fairly. Then we're going to resolve any remaining Fable effects that activate at the end of the Gather phase, and then each player is going to return their Gather card to their hand, and all resolved Fable cards are placed in the face-up discard pile near the Fable deck. Now some Fables indicate that they stay in play longer than normal. Don't discard these until indicated. Any monster miniatures on locations are also returned to the supply, and then we're ready to move on to the next phase. The second phase in a round is the build phase. Starting with the first player and moving around the boards in a clockwise order, each player is going to get to take one turn. On their turn, they're going to get to perform two actions, and they can even perform the same action twice. So let's go ahead and take a look at these actions. A player can draw one Fable card from the Fable deck and add it to their hand, and there is no limit to the number of Fable cards that can be in your hand. A player can also choose to gain one resource of their choice from the resource piles, either one straw, one brick, or one wood, and add it to the resource pile. There is no limit to the number of resources you can hold. And the build action. With a build action, a player can build one house section, and to do that they're going to pay the resource costs of that section to the supply, and then they're going to add the new house section to their board. And there's a couple limitations to this. 
First off, each of your houses must be built in order, starting with the floor, then the walls, and finally the roof. You can work on multiple houses at a time, but you cannot start a new house if you have an unfinished house of the same type. And once you finish the house, you can start, you can begin to build a new house of that same type. There are a maximum of five of each of the sections of each type of house. So once they are used, that is it. You, nobody can build any more of that type of section. And you can only start a new house if you have an empty build site on your player board, which each player board has five build sites. Then we also have special actions. Some friend cards permit special actions. Special actions do count as one of your two actions and can only be performed one and you can only perform each special action once per turn. So let me take you guys through the build phase with each of the players. So we're going to go ahead and start with the blue player as they're the first player and they get to perform two actions. So the first action that player is going to do is they're going to take a fable card from the fable deck. So they have a Thoughtful Gift. So that's a, a pretty decent card, so we'll add it to our hands. That was our first action. Our second action, I'm going to go ahead and choose to take a resource. We only have one of each. He needs to continue to gather resources, so he's going to take another brick. From there, then we're going to move over to the next player, so our green player. He also only has a couple resources, but he's going to go ahead and choose to build his first section. So he has to build the floor first, which is going to cost two resources to do so. So he'll add a floor section to his build sites. That was his first action. So the second action, we're gonna go ahead and also take a Fable card. So we have Cutting Corners, all right. Moving over to our orange player. He has four wood already, so he's gonna go ahead and choose to take another wood as his first action. And his second action, he will go ahead Let's go ahead and build a floor section. So he'll gain two resources back as a floor only costs two. And then we'll move on to our final player, the purple player, who also only has two resources. So he's gonna go ahead and take two fable cards to try to help him give, give him a little bit of an edge. The final phase in each round is the cleanup phase. During this phase, you're going to pass the starting player marker to the next player in clockwise order. So we'll pass it over to the green player. Then each player is going to retrieve their pig from the gather locations. Then each of the locations is going to be replenished with one mega resource of that type. And the market will get one of each. And then we're ready to move on to the next round. Now there's a couple other important things I want to cover real quick. The first are the friend cards. So each time you build a wall section, you're going to draw the top friend card and reveal it. And then you're going to decide whether or not you want to keep it or give it to another player. And that player cannot refuse it. Now each player can only have one friend at a time. So when you get a friend, you must discard your previous friend and keep the new one instead. Now some friends grant a special action and each special action can only be used once per turn during the build phase. Now it is sometimes possible and legal to use one friend's special ability or a special action and then acquire a new friend and then be able to use their, the new friend's special action during the same turn. The other thing I wanna take a look at is the first builder bonus. So when you complete a house, if it is the first of that type that is built by any player, then you're gonna earn the first builder bonus of that type. You're gonna go ahead and take the tile and collect one reward on the back, which all the tiles have the same rewards. You can either choose to take one friend, two fables, or one of each resource and add it to your resources. In game conditions, at the end of the build phase, if at least one player has completed three houses, then the game is going to end. And this can be any combination of house types. Now, if just one player has accomplished this, then that player will be the winner. If more than one player has accomplished this, then it will be the player that has built the sturdiest houses that will be the winner, starting with brick, then wood, and finally straw. And if there's still a tie, then it'll be the player that has the first builder for brick, then wood, and finally straw. So let me go ahead and take you guys through another round real quick. 
So again, we're going to go ahead and start with our green player first now, since he has the first player marker. He's going to go ahead and choose to play some cards. He is going to play a Fable card. And let's go ahead and play... Let's go ahead and play that one. All right, moving over to our next player. He does not have any Fable cards to play, so he's just going to play one Gather card. Our purple player is going to go ahead and play a Fable card. And moving over to our blue player. From here, then, the players that have played the Fable cards are going to reveal them. So starting with our green player, he has Cutting Corners, and this will happen at the end of the Gather phase. So we'll leave that out. Our other player has played Wolf. So this one is a monster, and it says, Before collecting resources, if any player is caught by the wolf, destroy all resources at that location before anyone collects them. All right, so then he's going to place the wolf where he wants to. So he's going to go and place him in the brickyard, as he figures there's going to be a number of players potentially going there for that brick. From here, then, we're, each player is going to reveal their gather location. So we do have a brick. He's going to go for straw. Our orange player is going to go for wood. And finally, our purple player is going to go to the market. So, like we said, with the wolf, he's going to destroy all the resources in that location before that player is able to gather them. And then each other player can gather their resources. And then we're going to resolve this fable here as well. So it says, at the end of the gather phase, if you are alone at a location, you're going to place this card on your player board where it becomes a new build site. Each house section at this site costs one less to build. So that's pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and place that uh, just off to the side here. All right, so we're ready to move on to the build phase. So starting with our player over here, he is going to go ahead and build walls. So that's going to cost him four resources. And we'll gather a wall section. Now, when we build walls, we also get a friend card. So we'll take the top card. This is the fairy godmother. So we have, as a special action, we can gain two fable cards. So that's pretty nice. Or we can choose to discard the fairy, mother, fairy godmother during your turn to exchange two fable cards from your hand for two resources of your choice. So very nice card. So our second action, we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and gain two fable cards. Moving over to our next player. He's got a bunch of resources here, so he's going to go ahead and spend the four wood to gain wall, a wall section for his building as well. And that will get him a friend card. So he has Robin Hood. So this one says, during the build phase, at the end of the build phase, each player that has more resources than you must give you one resource of their choice. Very nice. And his second action, he'll just go ahead and gain another wood. Moving over to our purple player here, she's got a lot of, of a little bit of everything. So she's going to go ahead and spend two to start building. So she'll add the section. And then she's going to go ahead and draw another Fable card for her second action. Finally, moving over to our blue player here, he kind of got hosed in that whole deal as he got caught with by the wolf. So he's going to go ahead and spend his two brick to build. And then he is going to go ahead and draw a Fable card. All right, so moving into the cleanup phase now. So each player can gain their Gather cards back. We'll go ahead and discard any Fable cards that were used. And our players will also get their little guys back. The Wolf will be returned to the Supply, and the first player token will be passed to the next player. And then finally, we'll resolve the Robin Hood. So each player that has more resources than our player will give him one, and that's total resources. So right now, nobody does. Everybody has two and three compared to his four, so he's not going to benefit from him right now. So that means next turn, he wants to spend those resources so that he can potentially take advantage of that. The last thing I want to go over is the two-player variant. So when playing with two players, you're going to use a neutral player named Prince Regal, who is going to be board controlled. During setup, you're going to place the Prince Regal resource die next to the gather location boards. And at the start of each gather phase, the player with the first player token will roll the resource die, and the prince will immediately collect half of the resources from the location rolled, rounding down. He's going to return those, so those resources to the supply. 
Now, both players then are going to choose to, to play their Gather and Fable cards as normal. And if any location has more than 10 resources on it, then Prince Regal does not roll and instead will automatically take from the location with the most resources. If more than one location has more than 10 resources and they have equal amounts, then Prince Regal will prefer brick than wood and last straw. Prince Regal is not going to be considered to be at the location he takes from and therefore he does not, he is not affected by fable cards that specify if a player is alone or not, and he does not get caught by monsters. Other than that, the game proceeds just as any other game does. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by my Facebook and Twitter accounts let me know what you guys are playing or doing there or if you have any questions as well. And as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I do take into account everything you guys say to try to improve my videos to make the best possible videos. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.